David Cronenberg's Videodrome is often cited as one of his best films, and it's easy to see why. Not only does it manage to build a chilling atmosphere that quickly surrounds the viewer, but it does so while not indulging in some of the tedium that is required to build such an atmosphere. It's under 90 minutes, but also doesn't feel too short. A complete and compact body horror film with substantial themes that are effectively conveyed. The whole affair comes off as a Freudian nightmarish cocktail that is equal parts sex and violence. An excellent companion piece to the director's 1996 film Crash. Something we are all aware of is the effect media has on us. In absence of lived experience, it can be the driving molder of our perception of reality and life. If we've never seen a dog before and watched Cujo religiously in our youth, we'll probably end up thinking all dogs are maniacs and vicious creatures unless given contradictory evidence. It's this reshaping of reality through media that Videodrome probes. Its plotline centers on Max, a president of a television station that specializes in more risque adult content. Max searches for the producers of a bizarre broadcast called Videodrome, which seems to feature a torture porn-esque show. He thinks that content is just what he needs to draw in more viewers, while Cronenberg has said that television executives and slasher films weren't in his crosshairs when making Videodrome. It's hard to not come to that conclusion with lines like these. It's just torture and murder. No plot, no characters, very, very realistic. I think it's what's next. Thank God help us. Regardless, those targets don't seem to be the movie's focal point anyway. Videodrome seems to focus on the extent to which films and television not only shape our perceptions of reality, but also our fundamental philosophies and actions. They can implant ideals or ideas in our subconscious. Said messages may be unintended ones from the artist that crafted the piece. However, they still carry the ability to push people to extremes or rethink their views on a busload of subjects. Just look at John Hinckley Jr., whose misreading of Taxi Driver famously led to him shooting Reagan. The media Max consumes blurs his perception of reality so much so that by the end of the film, he can't tell what's real. While not to that hyperbolic extent, the film shows something we often see happen to young people with no life experience. For example, pornography, while a shunned form of media, also has drastically influenced young people's expectations of sex. It's changed what young men expect their partners to do, and vice versa during acts of intimacy. Videodrome asks to what extent does media affect us, and what are the consequences that stem from its effect on us. The film seems to present the worst case scenario, a disillusioned individual disconnected from the actions he commits. Also, perhaps Perhaps in a more broad sense, Videodrome tackles state-controlled media, how propaganda can inject opinions and attitudes into masses, something that's perfectly communicated in the tape injection scene. Do you agree with my explanation of Videodrome? Comment down below if you do or don't.